Everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting for Thursday, November 21st. This is a regular meeting. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Planning Board members present tonight. We have. Frank Underwood, we have Sean Winston, the Vice Chair, Nicole Fecto, regular member Mike LaRue is absent, so uh, Dave, you're present tonight, so you'll be voting as a regular member. We also have our um, planning technician here, James, and we have our code enforcement officer, Jennifer, and members of the public. Moving on to public comment session is open to any resident or property owner here in the town to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Uh, we do have a public hearing this evening, so you know you're going to have an opportunity to speak about that. But if you want to come up and speak now, please feel free to come up. Public comment session is open. Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll close the public comment session. We'll have another one at the end of the meeting. Moving on to the approval of the minutes for November 7th, 2019's meeting. <coughs> Looks good. There was no typos even when you were talking about typos this time. Good. I was <laughs> thinking about keeping it going. <laughs> Don't do that. No. Don't do that. Didn't see anything. All right. So if, if we have nothing on this, then the motion would be for the approval of, of the minutes. I'll move that we accept the minutes as, as presented for November 7th. A second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? No's? No. Abstaining? Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and one abstaining. Next on the agenda is a site plan review school and parking expansion 20 Blackberry Hill Road, Hussey School, map R57, lot 27, R2 zone. The applicant is SAD 60. We're going to postpone, or we're going to continue to keep this public hearing open. Uh, the applicant is not here tonight, so we'll discuss that in old business. But this was a continuation from two weeks ago, so no public hearing on that this evening. Um, Next is a public hearing for conditional use application, medical marijuana storefront, 2 Bow Street, map U4, lot 49. It's in the SCI zone, and the applicant is Williams Greenery, LLC. This is a public hearing just to discuss this application, so feel free to come forward and talk about this application only. And just come, on, come up to the podium, please, and just state your name and your address for our viewers at home. This is a highly rated program on Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joanne St. Pierre for Bridge Street, also known as Five 20 years ago. <laughs> anyway, um, we are here to voice our opposition. This s street has not had any kind of development in the 43 years we've lived there. There are two businesses that have been there forever. Well, not forever, but for at least 70 or 80 years. And there has never been any other business coming in. There are a few homes that are owned by real estate companies and are rented, but they're rental properties. So there has not been any business development uh, on that street for the 43 years we've lived there. And we don't feel that this is the type of business that should be moving here. That is a residential street, basically, although it is zoned as business, but it has been a residential street for the 42 years we've lived there. And there has not been any development. Now, if somebody wanted to do a miracle marijuana, there are two vacant businesses open to be rented. They want to rent a house because it's cheaper. And that's basically what it boils down to. They do not want to pay the price for the street down the road, which is open. It has two areas uh, that they could move into. But they are trying to move into 
what has basically been a two-family house for about 60 or 70 years. So we're here to voice our uh, oppose. Okay. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else for the public hearing on the conditional use application for Williams Greenery LLC? Donald Young also for Bridge Street. Uh, I have questions because how does this, uh, I don't often come to playing board meetings. So how does this procedure go from here? Uh, is somebody going to make a case to you people? Because I, I trust you are the ones who make the decision. You take input from other people. But is the applicant going to speak? And if so, do we have a chance to, after we hear what the applicant is talking about, to ask questions or rebut him? How does this process work? Typically, no. Typically, no. When he's going to, when the applicant comes back up here, it's typically, you know, this is going to be your opportunity. But, I mean, if, if, if you would, we could, we could take some questions, but we're not going to have people shouting out questions and, and stuff like that. So, But I could ask a question Why don't you ask, This is what we could do. Why don't you ask the questions now? And then if you have any other questions after he makes his presentation again, then we can answer those. But what are your questions right now? Well, for, uh, to clarify the process, uh, for a conditional use, you have to notify people within the media area, is that correct? That's correct. When people are renting, are they notified or is their landlord, the owner of the property, notified? The landlord. So if the landlord is, lives in another town, he could care less. But if a person, if a family lives in the area, this abuts this proposal, and they have children, they may have legitimate concerns, but they don't get notified for any input. That's correct. It's, it's the address that's on the tax card. Do you think that's a fair way to resolve these conditions? Well, I don't effects? want to turn this into a question and answer no. session right now, but I, I understand your concerns. I can talk with you procedurally. Yes. Um, maybe after the meeting and something we can work into it. I mean, I, I'd be open to ideas to work into our procedure. <clears throat> well, I guess it makes sense what you're saying. Let me just say that. Yeah, maybe I've been watching too much of the sen uh, House hearings. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess what it boils down to is that uh, I'm having a, a small case of NIMBY. Not in my back yet. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't have a, a good grasp of the, of the way uh, planners work to say what can be allowed here and there. That's what we're doing tonight. The applicant's going to come back up. He's going to give a full explanation of how his business is going to run. All right. Thank you. I'll, I'll allow you to ask some other questions after, after his presentation. <clears throat> Anybody else for the public hearing for Williams Greenery, LLC? Okay, seeing nobody else come forward, we're going to close the public hearing. Next on the agenda is old business. It's the site plan review for uh, the Hussey School. The applicant has asked us to postpone action on this until the next meeting because they need some more time to be ready for that. So we'll postpone action on that. Can I ask one question on that of James? I thought when they were here last, we wanted them to make sure that information was forwarded and shared with DEP from our third party reviewer. Do you know if that has happened yet? 
I do know well, Neil mentioned one of the reasons for postponing <coughs> was to get comments back from the DEP. That's that's why. But we were also going to send our third party report because where they had kind of deferred jurisdiction, M and M referred jurisdiction to the DEP's findings. We wanted to make sure they were aware that our third party. Right, report. that was sent off, right? I'm not sure what Neil sent off, but I'll I'll check in with him Monday to Please make do. sure. Yeah, that's yep. all I'm asking. Just make sure that that gets sent in a timely manner because they're already on a time frame that they can't control. So, Next in old business is conditional <coughs> use application, medical marijuana storefront, 2 Bow Street, map U4, lot 49. is in the SCI zone, and the applicant is Williams Greenery, LLC. I'll turn it over to planning. Yeah, so this is the uh, public hearing. I mean, I would... No, this is, the, this is the... Not the public oh, hearing. The old we're in yeah. the action. Yeah. Um, so there's no um, memo. I think the next I mean, next step would be to address the abutters concerns. Okay. Can I ask the ask applicant to come on up, please, to the podium, and just describe your your business and how it's going to operate. Good evening. My name's William Stofan. Open up this. Uh, Medical marijuana, I've been growing medical marijuana for about five years now. And we're going to start going from seed to flower. So the state knows where all the material and stuff goes for each unit that we have. This is <clears throat> more or less like a pharmacy. They have a college now in Maryland that takes a two-year course. Once my daughter graduates from uh, USM and gets a master's, we've been discussing for her to go to the College of Maryland because it'll tell for everybody's ailment from what type of marijuana to use, what different the oils, and et cetera. It's not going to be just like people coming in off the street saying, hey, I want to buy marijuana. You've got patients. It's all governed by the state. Everybody's got to have a mar medical marijuana card. It's, it's a place to be able to have your product, and it's going to be all over the state of Maine. <clears throat> I know there's concerns about people having marijuana and that, but it's legal now. Everybody, you, 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 anybody in this room could go and grow three plants in the yard now. I've been the construction business. I deliver oil and I do paving. I got an oil company. You wouldn't believe the driveways and the oil deliveries we make, and you see marijuana everywhere now. But this let's yeah. just stick. Can we just stick to your business? Yeah. Can we just well, stick? Is that, this there's is a lot of concerns about what's going to be happening in that building. Well, the hours will be from 10 o'clock in the morning to 8 in the evening. If someone calls calls in and they want to come pick up a delivery of whatever type they want because the salves might oh, we'll sell it to them. I mean, it's not going to be a line of traffic, it's, you know, of people standing out there. We asked for a 15-minute time period, you know, for somebody to come in and buy the medicine and then leave. I mean... No, wait, I, no, no. Let, let me just, we have to control. Go ahead, finish. So, <clears throat> it's, I mean, it's just a store. It's, to me, it's no different than a regular drugstore. How many employees? I'll probably have, well, maybe two. You don't need many. The people- there's No growing operations. No, no, there's no growing. Talk about the containment of the marijuana. It'll all be- uh, And the security. It, it's all gonna be sealed. There, there won't be any older. It's already prepackaged before it comes there. And I went to the uh, chief of police, and he told me, just get someone, you know, security, because I get the American security. Right, we have that. And uh, they're going to install everything that I need. And I went a little overboard. He, the chief said I don't have to go quite that far, but I just did it for my own safety. And can you talk about the detail of the, the seed to the, the plant? There's a, there's a sophisticated tracking system. Yeah, that's going to start in March. They're yeah, going to track all your marijuana from seed up to flower. 
and you have to keep a log. Yes, you have to keep a log. Can, you, can I ask you a question about each patient who comes in? The state gets notified that, that you've made a sale? Well, not right now. I imagine that's going to change in March. Anyone right now that has a medical marijuana card, I got a couple patients in the 80s, and they use the salve for their face because they got bad nerve problems. And they come over and they buy the salve and they use it for that, which this, you know, <clears throat> Medical marijuana does work very well in different. James, can you can can you mention the conversation that you had? You don't have to say the person's name, but the conversation that you had about the um, the state requirements and the uh, notifications every twenty four hours. Yeah, and a little bit different because this for him was more of the adult use side. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a little bit of a, a little bit of distinction, but it does seem like starting in March, there's new regulations right. where you. Every person that comes in, you have a point of sale system that you have to log and it's tracked, is it right. monthly? It, yeah, it'll all be on computer. But you're not growing anything there. That's being grown someplace else. So I'm assuming what you're saying when it goes from seed to whatever you call the harvested product yep. to be, um, that's like a materials data s sheet. You're gonna have to have an M MDS right, yeah, sheet because on it. So it but but that's only so that people know that you're giving them this vial or this prescription and it's got these components in yes. it from a seed to however Yeah, they want to you know they want to track the marijuana and make sure it's good and now they have uh, labs which we there's a couple of them now and we have marijuana be tested and all that too I jumped the gun on questions I'm sorry we'll finish up um, my whole point has been to how do you track this, how do you control the IDs, and I'm kind of curious that the rules and regulations are going to come out here shortly on retail or recreational marijuana, and that's what I think you're referring to in March, but how many of those rules... He's, are, in, he's in medical, different part. I, I know, yeah. but how many of those rules then are going to be put into the medical aspect of it, knowing full well that I'm not sure how many rules exist for medical now other than, I mean, for the, this is the first time I heard there were pharmacists going to school to become yeah. licensed pharmacists. Um, There's going to be a big thing eventually. So it sounds <coughs> to me like a lot of this stuff is going to be revamping per what the states are going to require right. because got it's only legal in the states for recreational. Yeah, right now it's only legal in the state of Maine for... Recreational. No. Well, medical. 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 It's been going on for three years trying to get it recreational. I mean, they made it recreational for anybody on the street that they can grow three plants. It used to be five, but they brought it down to three. I mean, you could grow three, you, you, no matter who. But my whole concern last time was that identification, and it's a card only. But I had the similar concern. There's no photo ID. No, there's no photo. It's just got a and number I, I, on I it. I know if it's, if it's medical, if you've ever been to the doctors, how many times do they ask you your name, your date of birth, and identification? They ask. I mean, I don't, I'm a medical marijuana card carrier and, and patient, and I go to TRICAN, which is somebody that we've dealt with. And when I go in, I have to bring, I'm in their computer, but I bring my card and my ID. I'm always asked for, and they, they know me They ask there. for a picture of I yeah, think, I and think they know me there. But it's not on your card. <laughs> I no, think it's not it on your card. The photo's not on your card. I no. think there's some confusion, and obviously this yeah. doesn't necessarily fall under the privy of the planning board. Right. But I really think that you should get clarification on the interpretation of the IDing process. Yeah, yeah. photo ID or some, something along that line. And then you, you the, my interpretation of the law is very different when I've read it in the past week since the last meeting how I interpret it is very different than how you've presented it. Well, I mean, everybody's got to have a card. The card, yes, as well as a photo ID. Right, I mean, yeah, well, it's like going to a liquor store. You're going to have to show. That is not what you said last the, at the last meeting, so I think that's where some of the no, questions you, are coming up from. You asked me if it had a picture ID on the cards, and I sure. said no. And the card doesn't, but the photo ID identification in addition to the card. Right, well, to prove who you are, yeah. Right, you're going to have to prove who you are. That's a, a definite, you know, you can't... So you're, you're saying in your store, you're gonna need the, you, need, you need your photo ID and your medical and card medical together. Card. 
together because there's numbers on your medical cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have to log sales? Meaning, do you have to keep a yeah, record monthly and submit them to somebody along the way through yeah, the licensing? Yeah, because I've been paying sales tax for four years now. You got to pay your sales tax and everything. Just so you know the volume that's handled, and you know the person that's been or the people that have been recipients of that. Right, but it's open now. You only allowed so many patients, but now anybody, if they get a medical card, they they can go to you. Sean, do you have any questions? <coughs> not, uh, not for the business itself. No, I, my question's more concerning with location. And I mean, I personally, I wasn't in favor of um, any of the marijuana businesses being in the village overlay. That's how I feel about it. Um, you know, I felt we had worked through the ordinances a million times, and we had this worked out where we had certain locations where the businesses would be located but apparently something I don't know if something went wrong or something changed um, <coughs> so it was a conditional use for the village overlay which I'm, I, I'm just not in favor of I understand this location that. I know <coughs> you know watching things that have happened in Massachusetts when licenses have been given and just the issues that towns have had once those licenses have been given um, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of issues that have gone along with things down in Massachusetts when stores have opened they've had a lot of you know just traffic problems and things like that and I know this location I don't know what is there for parking now I think there's only two spaces on the on the listing for I'm assuming that for, it was for the barbershop that was there or is still there. Barbershop is still there. And uh, whatever previous business was on the second floor. Right. Um, and I know, you know, we talked a little bit about our, uh, the parking that we had set up for the village overlay. And it it's, seems like it's a, may, it, maybe it's a little out of whack for this, but you would be, if you look at the parking requirements, it's it's a lot of parking that would be required for the square footage that you've got. It's it's not going to be any different than somebody walking in getting a haircut. They're gonna you got parking here, some across the street. They'll get yep. out, walk over, buy what they need, and leave. They're not going to be you know. And and I understand that there is there is parking in the area. Right. Um, but the way the ordinance lists the parking requirements. I don't know that we meet those parking requirements. Um, that's that's how, what I was looking at. Well, I understand that too. But I, when I went over, before I even started this, I went to the town to make sure I could do this, and you know, to, and it was yeah. zoned for that area. Yep. So I and and it is currently in the zoning for that area. Like I said, I'm not in favor of it being zoned oh. for that area, but. That's the way it's written right now. Um, I guess what would I guess what would work best is if you're going to do an appointment system. I think that would maybe the best way to alleviate people. I know because I'm probably not the only one that would have concerns about traffic. Mm. So no, I mean, it's I not if you have an appointment system, I think that's a way that will help alleviate people's concerns about traffic in the area. I've gone to half a dozen of them: Biddeford, South Portland. And you don't go in there, you don't see gangs of people. People will walk in, and probably she must know too. They go in, they get their medicine, and they leave. Yep. They're gone. They don't want to hang around there. Yeah, no, and I understand that. I just don't want, I wouldn't want to see everybody show up on the same day no, at the same they, time. Well, they wouldn't do that. So I, I don't know. believe. But, <laughs> but an appointment, you know, if you're going to utilize an appointment system, I think that would help and I, people understand that, right, it's not, I'm, that I'm, that's not going to happen. I was going to do both. You know, I mean, someone get. I, that's why I said eight o'clock at night. People get out of work and they want to go pick up the medicine. Some can't get there during the day, and that's why I said ten in the morning. It gets people going, you know, and then it's not going to be. Crazy. I can understand what you're saying in Massachusetts because I believe that's recreational. I think it is, yeah. And they went crazy. Yes. And I agree with you there, but it's not recreational. It's medical marijuana. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it, and I'm just like yeah. I said, it's a pharmacy to me because there's thousands and thousands of people that go to these stores every day now. You know, Bitterfields, Portland, Augusta. <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead, Jen. Okay, so I think what is happening here is I think when you came to visit us, you had your thoughts in order. You were kind of relaxed when you talked to us, and you made a little bit more sense. I think right now you're kind of missing the point. So what I want you to do is just take five minutes, yeah. go through the process of starting when people park their car. What do they have to do to get into the building? How long will they be there? What are your hours of operation? How many people are going to be working? How many people are going to be there? I think that's kind of what we're looking for instead yeah. of like the process of other buildings and whatever. What's going to happen in that building? So if I pulled up there in my car and I got out, what do I do from there? What's the security process? Because I think that's their concern well, well, about what's going to happen. Right. Well, you're going to, what I want to do is put a buzzer on the door, you know, so that they come up. You got a, you got an exit door in case there's something wrong. But if they come in, they ring a buzzer, you let them in. Some of them you just walk into. Okay, but what's what are you doing? So you're going to let's not let's not talk about yep. other people's businesses in okay, Bayford. Let's talk I'm about gonna, your place in Berwick. I'm going to put a buzzer on the door, and I'm going to accept phone calls. If they come in, I'm not going to let an army of people in there because maybe two, three at a time. But I don't think you'll even see that. But when you walk through the door, then what happens? So I buzzed in. You walk I'm in, and there'll be a display uh, out there showing what kind of product's going to be in there, what type of different medicines. So when do I show my card? When you buy, and then we'll, then when you buy, you show your ID, your card, and then we'll put it on the computer, and then we can look you up each time that you come in. So if I didn't have a card, I could make an appointment, buzz in, walk in, see all of your product, and then when it came time to buy, I couldn't buy, but I could see everything and I could enter the You're building. You're not going to see much. You're going to just see, say that's the display, and we're going and it's in glass, and you can see, look at what's there. Yep. So my understanding is when you walk into a facility like this, and maybe Nicole can help with this, when you walk into a facility like this and they buzz in, the first thing that they should be doing is showing you their ID and their medical marijuana card. Oh. That's my understanding oh. of it because otherwise Frank could go in and check out your display and then when it came time to ask for it, you could be like, where's your card? Oh, sorry, I don't have one. Well, now he's in your store and what's his business in your store without a card? So where... Where is that in the process at the end I of it? Never, when to be honest with you, I've never done it because I've been in these stores and no one asked me to leave. You know, okay, I look. This isn't their stores. This is no, your I'm store. Just like, saying, how do I you understand? Yeah. That's why I went to so many different stores to see how they operated themselves. But you're in an area that the use is allowed subject to conditions. Right. Conditional use. And what we're trying to do is, is put on this. I mean, if you. Conditions. Right. I understand that. If you want me to have show, tell folks, oh, before you come in, do you have your medical marijuana card? I'll do that. Ma'am, ma'am, ma I will get to, I just need to get questions from the board first, and then I'll allow questions. Nicole. Um, are you ever going to change it over to recreational use of marijuana? Do you have any intention at all of ever doing well, that? Well, I heard from the town you can't do that in this area. Okay, perfect. I would like to see that as a condition. Um, signage, what's your signage going to be like? Well, I just figured I'd have something, nothing going out, you know, just Williams Greenery okay. Pharmacy on it, you know. And it's pretty dark over there. And it gets dark out really early here. And if you're going to be open until 8 o'clock at night, it's really dark at 8. So what kind of lighting are you going? To, are you planning on having? And also for security reasons, I think lighting is really important. I was leaving that up to the town. Oh, we love lighting. <laughs> I mean, some towns our, our don't want point. too much light. Yes. Yeah. So you'd like us to draw that onto the Have you reviewed, the, have you reviewed the, the, the lighting ordinance and the sign ordinance? No, no I haven't. I okay. said I'd do whatever the town asked me to do. Well, th that's in the ordinance. Yeah. Well, I didn't look at that part. I remember, didn't on Route 4 you had the police chief weigh in on lighting as far as I mean, blind spots and those kinds of I'm things? I'm looking at that application right now for oh. Paper Birch, and it's extensive and very well thought out compared to, compared to this. So I'm just trying to grasp 
this. But I wasn't here last time either, so forgive me. Any other questions? Um, that's all I have for now, I believe. David? I'm not going to harp. Any plans on offering delivery? Yeah. I've thought of that. It depends on their age. Because some people can't leave their homes that well. And if they wanted me to deliver, I've had all these options in the back of my mind. Because I... You know, some, some people. Get, I'm sorry. Did you finish your question? I'm, did you, I'm well, sorry. I was just answering, finishing up, David's. Thank you. Um, let's try to get you on a microphone here. If you can go up to, if you could just step back, can you go yep. up and ask a question, ma'am, on the microphone? We just have to get it on the microphone. I don't want it to sound nimby, but where do you live? I live in Kennebunk. No kidding. Why aren't you applying in Kennebunk for a medical marijuana license? They don't have it there, and I might go some civility uh, places are here in Bella. Your basis or your... Where I grow my medical marijuana. Yes, because that's your income. I got more than that income, ma'am. I'm not trying to make... Okay. All right, we're getting, we're getting a little <laughs> out of hand here, so just, <laughs> can just keep it directed towards... Okay. Yeah. Um, a we, direct question, the public comment session, a public a hearing is over. One house away. The family next door to us has five children, and they're all at impressionable ages. Uh, two of them are in school, uh, and they're going to be there for a while. The, most of the neighbors on the street have children. I don't think this is the kind of business that should be here in what has been a residential area. Okay, do you have a question? Because I was going to allow questions. Public hearing is over. This okay. is procedural. Okay. Uh, my question, well, I, my first question was where did he live? My second question is who is going to be living there in that apartment or is that just going to be a business? It's going to be a business. It's not going to be a just a business. Right. There, no one's and what about the other side? The other apartment. I think she's got the wrong house. It's the barbershop house. With no, no, the no. This is a two-family house. No, no. It's the barbershop house. It's what? It's Ray's barbershop house, the second floor of that. It's not the duplex next door. Okay. Well, my questions were, where did he live? And... Why wouldn't he be interested in moving in two areas down the street that are commercial? This building Why is, is ma'am. This building is commercial. This building is already commercial. Okay. Well, there, there was an accountant that was upstairs for years. Yeah. Moving into the accountant spot. Yeah. Fine. I don't have any more questions. Thank you, ma'am. Dave, I just want to say before you guys go forward that when he came in to talk to us in the office, and I know I've said it before, but I just want to put it on the record. He can follow like the steps of telling you exactly. I know. I think he's getting nervous up here, but like when he came in and talked to us, he was very, like, of what he was gonna do. So I don't know if that means anything, but. Well, we don't have a letter. Do you have a letter from the police chief? No, I don't. Okay. Just Just did, but you did talk to chief. Yeah, I talked. James asked me to go over there. I went directly to him. And he said to me, Bill. Actually, can you come up to the podium? I'm sorry, because BCTV is about to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> See the door open? Yeah. <laughs> I hear the door open. Yes, I did go to the police station, and I talked to the chief. Matter of fact, he wasn't in. He called me back because James asked me to go there to see about security. And he says, I can't tell you what to put in. So I went on and beyond what I needed. Okay, so every application that we've had come forward before this, I mean, this is probably something that we should have probably told you two weeks ago. We would like something in writing from, from the police chief, okay. that, that you guys had a discussion. He just, he looked at the building, he made a recommendation or two, yeah. and, he thinks, and he reviewed your security plan, and he believes that your security plan is good. 
Well, I believe I got one of the best ones because I had Corey to come from America. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do, absolutely. But we've we've always required that. And I'm sorry, I apologize. We should have gotten that. Yeah, well, Don't well. we require, is there a checklist of letters that we have, Dave, that would the fire chief weigh in as well for access? Um, not with the fire chief. Okay. You can make it a condition of approval on the certificate of occupancy that we need that the letter before you get I yeah, want to see the letter. I want to see the letter that. before we start. I'd like to see it before yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a few things missing. I from can get here. that letter tomorrow. I'll go see him again. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, I think a letter from the police chief, a lighting plan, some kind of signage. I would like to see all of that. I didn't know what you would want for a sign and yeah. how big I could go. It's, it's what not you what we want. want. It's what you want. There has <laughs> we to need to see that, what you want. Uh, I know some towns will tell you, you know, you can have a sign this big. We have. We, that's what you. we've told oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. I did not get you that. You can't have a sign any bigger than this. Yeah. You have. You can't have lights that do this or that. Yeah. It, James, could you get him lights the, on the sign? On, you know. mo on Monday, James will share with you the not that, in those. I'll those he'll, James will share with you those ordinances on Monday, but you, yeah. you should put them in a plan and say, "This is what I'm yeah. thinking." This is this. I thought, yeah. or at least have an idea. Right? Yeah. No, we don't tell you. But you need to know that those things are out there. Yeah. Okay. It's a guideline. Yeah, because I mean, I tried my darndest to get my book there together for you. So. Yeah. I mean, the sign thing. Yeah, just to be able to show them because it's part of the, you know, part of the downtown. Yeah. They'll want to see it, but you'll ultimately get it signed off from Jen. Okay. It's on the right steps. All right, thank you. <laughs> Whatever you want, I'll do. That's what we want. A letter from the police chief, a lighting plan, and a signage example. Lighting? Okay. All right. Can All right I thank you. Yep. To follow up with what Sean was talking about and the suggestion that he was going down the path of is you've got hours of operation from 8 to 10. Is it possible in that window of operation hours that you actually earmark a block of time that walk-ins are accepted or like you started to talk about that yeah appointments or appointments are accepted appointment <laughs> times are from 6 to 8 p.m. in the evening yeah. walk-ins are from and then anybody else can come in during the day I mean please just give that some thought and you don't yeah. have to answer that question because tonight but in, in work the, it through with in James the back of my mind man, is you know like you've called right aid your prescription numbers on there they can call in you got it ready that's what my goal is to be once I get this rolling in a full circle you know that it makes it easy people can just come in pick it up and go you gotta be more definite next so we'll put you back on the agenda for two weeks from now okay All right. uh, two weeks from now yeah December, December 5th. 5th December 5th all right. Well, I, but, I, but don't you, you can't be wishy-washy, okay, on, on these things. Well, it's whatever you want. Oh, I haven't uh, really I mean, thought about that the, yet. You, I know you got to do what the town wants. That, and that's why we have the ordinances. But we'll, if, we're, if we're asking you questions, hours of operation, how many employees? Well, I think I'm going to have two, or I think I'm going to have that. Yeah, I mean, you have to, to be, be written down. You know, there. I'm going to have two employees. Well, at, okay. At one point, I'm going to have one. I don't know how busy this is going to get. You know, that's why I said, well, I could go to two if I had to. But I don't see it. All the stores I've gone in, except for one, I went into South Portland. Now let's not talk about South okay. Portland. Es right, essentially, we're essentially, we're looking for a business plan. Yeah. How you're going to operate your business from the time you open to the time you close your doors right. every day. So, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good way to put it, Dave. Which is what we've gotten before. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep the public hearing open, too? I can't. I already closed already it. Already closed it, okay. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is new business. You don't. You don't have to feel. You feel free. You don't have to stick around for this All next right. one. Yeah. Okay. We won't. We won't be offended if you leave. Yeah. Seriously. Now, if Alex leaves, we'll be offended. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll see you. We'll be there. Next on the right, agenda you, yeah. is in new business is a subdivision amendment for 115 Old Pine Hill Road. The lot is uh, or the it's a uh, map U seven lot forty seven LRB leasing is the applicant James. Yeah, so we're at a subdivision amendment, and when you create a new lot, it's basically you're back at preliminary. So this is our sketch. So Les, do you want to go, or Chris? I will be recusing myself from this. What's that? Good. I like to see. I'm not quite sure how to face this. I'm going. 
toward the camera. That's, yeah, go, go towards that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Because I don't want my integrity called into question by real clear politics. Like I said, it can't be called into if. My name is Chris Mendy. I'm with Civil Consultants. I'm here on behalf of Les Bodwell. Um, good evening. Um, so we're, we're here to just um, ask guidance and talk a little bit about the feasibility of making an application for a revision to um, the project that we're showing on the, the plan here. Um, roughly a year ago, um, I don't remember the exact date off the top of my head, um, we were before the board uh, with an application for multifamily, two buildings. Um, each has eight units in them on this site. At the time, um, we did the soils mapping, wetlands mapping, and so forth on the property. And um, using the calculation guidelines in the ordinance, we came up with a density, um, residential density of 16.9 units on the site. Um, the density uh, threshold is 10,000 square feet per, per unit. Um, so the project's been largely built. I haven't been by recently. I, 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 I guess it's most primarily um, finished at this point, if not completely finished. Um, and Les approached me uh, several weeks back and asked me what the possibility was of getting an additional unit on the site. In particular, he's interested in placing a building lot um, on the, the Pine Hill frontage, a 10,000 square foot single family residential unit. And from the calculations before, as I said, we have an outstanding 0.9 <laughs> residential units. Um, and he asked me if there was any way to uh, make that into a full 10,000 square foot uh, uh, requirement. So he did approach a number of landowners abutting and tried to purchase portions of their lots. And um, some lots weren't large enough to yield any property uh, that would be usable without making them substandard. Others were just not interested in making the sale. So he came up with the idea and talked with our soil scientist about the possibility of um, could I fill wetlands on the site? 4,000 square feet is generally allowed under the permit by rule for some types of applications through DEP. Um, and it got me to thinking about that. And I said, well, you know, we might, we, we probably wouldn't get a permit to fill wetlands for this type of modification to the site. It's not, you, you've got a, a reasonable yield from the property, and DEP would probably not grant that. So let's not go down that road. Is there something else we could think about? So something that came to mind was, in the course of any sort of development on a property, um, there are modifications that take place. There are areas that are paved, there are areas where soil disturbances take place, and the drainage characteristics of the site are changed. Um, and so we, we got to thinking along those lines and said, would it be possible, or perhaps we've already accomplished this, but would it be possible to change some of the non-wetland soils on the site that are um, somewhat poorly drained into moderately well-drained or well-drained soils by adding additional soil and then, you know, capping with uh, loam. Um, it's a little unorthodox. It's not something I've presented before or thought about, but the logic of it makes sense to me with regard to what we're trying to accomplish with these density requirements, and that's the carrying capacity, drainage, infiltration rates, and all of these things. So I, I, I believe there's some logic behind this approach, though it's unorthodox. Um, <laughs> and we're, we're here to, uh, I guess Les did discuss, discuss this with Lee J. Uh, a little bit to my surprise. Lee J. Um, I wasn't part of the conversation, but communicate was communicated to me that Lee J off the top of his head didn't see any problem with it um, so we're, we're here to ask the, the board's input in this regard um, just in the way of thinking if this helps with people's thinking about this um, if you imagine a piece of property that has ledge on it well the, the drainage capacity of that ledge you know is you're gonna get immediate runoff you, you're not going to get any infiltration but if you cover it with 24 inches of gravel and loam over that, 
now you have storage capacity in the soil, you have infiltration, you have a situation where you have water movement under the surface, not at the surface, and you've improved the drainage capacity of that site. And that's, that's what we're, we're not going to do it on ledge. If it's allowed, we're going to do it on the kind of the mid-slope soils between the wetlands and the, the very uh, you know, prime soils at the tops of the slopes. Um, and it would require, I think it was 2,000 square feet of modification to do that um, because of the 50% credit that's allowed um, in, the, in going from the uh, somewhat poorly drained to the moderately well drained. On some sites, if, if this was new mapping on this site and we were here for the first time and this type of activity had already occurred, these soils would be categorized as made soils is the term that soil scientists use and they, they would not typically fall under the categories of poorly or very poorly drained soils. Um, we're, we're here to look for guidance and see if this is, is possible within your purview. <coughs> Start with David this time. I'm going to go to that end of the table. Oh, he, he wants me to buy one thing. Things I told him the other day to start at that end. Uh, All right, we'll go with Sean. I have, but I like your I, questions. I do have a question. And my question <laughs> is less about the soils and the lot. Where is the water and sewer coming and going from? Uh, for this, for this new for this building? new site. Um, maybe I haven't really. Uh, public. Yeah, public. public, public water where, and sewer. Where are you going to access it? I know. So a, you're going to put a road cut in a road that was just paved less there's than six months ago. Cut. That road was just paved. There's already a road cut. Access. There's already access to that lot. So they've already cut into that brand new road? I mean, service connections have been... Oh, for the, for the sewer for, and water? For the sewer, sewer and water service, you're going to have to cut into a road that was just paved six months ago, less than six months ago. Last month. It was paved six weeks ago. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I've never seen a road cut get patched in and not settle. I, I have a hard time okaying cutting into a road that the town just paved. You know, that, that's, my, that's my concern. I, the soil in the lot, you know, that, Frank can probably speak more to that than I can, but it makes no sense to me to give the go-ahead for cutting in for soil and water into a road that just got paved. So nobody can ever build on that road? Well, you know, it, less, can you just go, less can you just go to the mic? Typically there's a moratorium. Once a road's paved, there's X amount of years before you can... Summit's worth Les, can you go to the mic? Sure. Thank you. Summit's worth it's 10 years. Yes. I, I don't know off the top of my head if we have that in. I don't know if the. There, is, there, is, some, there is something. So I believe it's three years. Right. So I, I think that would be the question is do we have a road commissioner? In, I mean, if the road commissioner was willing to give me a road cut the permit. The town manager. The town manager? Yeah. If the town manager was willing to give me a road permit, a road cut permit, I mean, that's, that's a different issue, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I'm asking. Uh, if, if, yeah. he, if, no, if he, he was willing to issue that, but yeah. I've got to tell you, there's a lot of people in Berwick that have been wanting that road to be paved for a long time. <laughs> if somebody starts cutting into it, there, uh, they could be a well, I just I can't imagine that nobody can build on that road because no, I'm not, it's it. not that nobody can build on that road. But I think Dave said, you know, there's a moratorium on cutting into that road once it's paved, once it's freshly paved and completely redone. This is something yeah, that we'll I mean, have to look into. And that's something is, that's going to have is, to be looked at. If it is, it is. And, you know, I guess then the other option is to put a uh, private water and sewer there. Um, one other question. Is that's it, I, I, don't don't know, I don't recall Lots the location of the utilities. Is it possible to bore under the road? Is the sewer sewers on the opposite side? I'm that, not sure that's where the it I guess yeah. that's the question. So we could where investigate is the water those sewer? issues if we, if we, you know, if we get a favorable answer to the first question, we yeah. can certainly come back and... and no present yeah, I think there would have to be some other kind of solution possibly than trying to cut into that brand new pavement. And, oh. and I mean, I don't have a problem putting private water and sewer in. I mean, it's... You would just be at, you do, You would need 20,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah. For private. Okay. Well, that's something that we're definitely going to have to check in with Steve on. Frank. So, uh... Why stop with 2,100 feet? Why don't we f fill in the full 25,000 feet of some wide and go for 18 lots? We're not filling anything in. 
there's there's a there's a there's, huge difference there's a huge difference well, between what we're talking about and what you just about said. Phil, because in, in his calculation for the proposed, he's got he's got the well drained and he's got plus fill twenty one hundred square feet. So I mean we are talking about fill. Okay. And I, I really appreciate what your your engineer surveyor has tried to make for an argument, but I won't buy that. I will tell you that because the whole idea behind densities is based on soil types, not engineered or man-made soil types. Now, if that was a totally clean slate out there that had been run as a fill-in area and we had nothing on record as a subdivision there, then maybe the argument that they're already disturbed, they've been improved because of man's errors or whatever, then maybe you could make the argument on your density calculations. But to go in there right now and take a specific soil that's classified as poorly drained and engineer it, which you tell me how you're going to engineer it, um, to, to make it a moderate, I'm assuming, and redo the calculations. It flies right in the face of density calculations if we allow this to even happen. So I will not support this approach to trying to get another lot in there. I will not. I disagree with you. I disagree that that uh, flies in the face of density. You know, the, the issue with density is to have the adequate amount of moderately drained soil. So I don't see how taking poorly drained soil, which serves no purpose, and this was a question that I asked my engineer, is I understand filling wetlands is, is damaging to the environment, right, because wetlands are our water filtration system. So that's something I take very seriously and something that I considered very seriously. Um, however, poorly drained soil, there's no, there is nothing that says that I can't go scrape poorly drained soil up and correct that soil to make it moderately drained or better drained. Um, and, and the other issue is that soil may already be changed because that location that we picked out is where I had my loom pile. And, there, and I did nothing wrong by doing that, by stocking my loom there, because it's not wetlands, it's not protected, I didn't... So it may already be different my, density. My point is the base calculations for the density of that lot were made based on undisturbed classifications of existing soils. And to go in there and try to add a lot at this juncture is something I won't support. Okay. I just want to be right up front before you go down a road of looking at the sewer department or you go to the water department and all of that stuff. To me, that just flies in the face of what the whole intent of density calculations are. It's by the numbers. I, I, I guess I'd, I'd like clarification on how that flies in the face of it. Just do the numbers. You get 100% for very well-drained soils. You get 50% for moderate, or I mean, uh, moderately drained soil. Oh, and you get zero density out of poorly drained. I mean, it's, it's right on whatever drawing it was in your packet. So what, I don't understand how it flies in the face of it. I understand how it, it, fly, how that, it would fly the, That's what it, it says. That's how you calculate I, the I density of a lot. I don't understand how it would fly. I, I understand how it would fly in the face of it if you were filling wetlands, and you said no because you're, you're damaging the environment. This is not damaging the environment. I understand you're saying you need this much density of good usable soil yeah. to build a house on it. So what difference does that make? if that was put in there or if it was there originally, if there's no harm to the environment. By All I'm using is your baseline information that you provided day one when I wasn't on the planning board when this came in. But those soils lines were, I'm assuming, done by an intensity soil survey. High intensity. Yeah. High intensity. So they didn't go out there and use the old soil survey of one hole every mile. They went out there and they did the high intensity. And the lines are the lines. And the soils are the soils, and the density was calculated based on the soils. And that's where I stand. So what if that is different now? Then you did something wrong. Well, Filled I just told you that I, I didn't do anything wrong if I piled loom there but what I'm saying the is, characteristic of so the soil. So then, then, then go to the, the whole thing, do something wrong on the remaining 25,000, and get 18 lots in there. Do that. So you're telling me if I if I change the characteristics of poor, poorly drained soil during construction, I did something wrong? Yeah, I think you did. Really? Unless you did it for an engineered reason, for drainage, for a leach field, for a well, or whatever, which was all done by permitting and approvals through a whole different level of regulations. 
Do you have the, uh, could you point to the regulation where it says I did something wrong? I'm just saying the, the numbers are the numbers. And, I, and it says you get a certain value of density. Well, no, I'm, I'm kind of wants. offended now that you told me that I did something wrong well, on my project. Maybe and I'd I, like I, you to show I, me the regulation. I'll apologize. I'll say I, 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 I may have misspoke. Wrong. I may have misspoke. I, I, I think what Frank is saying is is that the and, and this this is largely why we're here. In, I, th I think what Frank is saying is if we modified something in. Um, uh, that was outside the context of what was permitted with, First. The, with the primary permit, then, then that shouldn't have been done. And, and we haven't done that. Well, I don't believe we have done that. Well, but that, if we, um, yeah, so I think that. I thank think you for clarifying that. Yeah. So that whatever happened cannot be used to re revisit the calculations for lot density. Thank you, Chris. I need I need more time on this, and I need to talk to the town planner. And we I think we need a memo from the town planner as well um, before we can move forward on this. So um, I'll talk to Lee J tomorrow and ask him to provide that for us and his his reasonings on that as well. So okay, I hope I didn't misrepresent. Like I said. <laughs> that, you know. And I apologize. No, 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 no. It's just I, I need you know, I, I need some more you. now that I got the presentation. Very responsible, Mr. Underwood. I know you are. Now I, that I, I got the uh, now that I got the presentation, and now that I know exactly what, and after hearing from you, I'm going to need some time on this. I think we all are going to need yeah, some yeah, time say, on it. It's kind of an unorthodox way of thinking. And when you say that, that makes me think that I, you know, because it's like it's something that doesn't happen all the time. So well, you were just asking. Yeah, I know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Les. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So we'll, yes. we'll hear back from the board at some point. And get, get you back on the agenda. Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, yeah no, I'll, I I'll think check so. it with you, too. Either way. I think so, within the next, maybe the, that next meeting, possibly. But just as long as Lee J can get something formally sent out to us, a formal memo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um. One more uh, opportunity here for public comment session. If you'd like to come up for public comment session one more time, just just be advised that we can't talk about uh, any of the applications. Because, well, no, we can't talk about the applicant that you were up here earlier for because he's not here, so we can't answer your questions. But you could still get on the record with public comment. We just can't we can't answer you. Does that make? I know it doesn't make sense, but. I only, well, I guess I had a question was that there are two vacant storefronts for commercial property, and this man is trying to move into what has been known as a residential property. That was my only question. It's a commercial property. It's always been a commercial property. Okay. It's the barbershop and the, the old accounting office, right. even though it was in a house. We never got any kind of notice until this meeting. We never knew that anything was going on. That's because that's that's when we have a public hearing. We, that's when we notify everybody for Who a public you hearing. I mean, we don't have a television. Well, you got you got a You're mail. here, so it worked. It's it worked. Certified mail. Yeah, you got your certified. It worked. It worked. That's the only t thing that's, we heard. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's all you're supposed that's, to hear. That's how that's you get the notification. Hear. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. he's been meeting. The one time, just yeah. once before. Yeah. One time, yeah. he met here, and we approved the application as complete. He he, he presented us a complete application, and then from there we go and we schedule a public hearing and invite the abutters and the public in. Okay. Well, we're you know we've been living here for forty-two years. I understand. Uh, there's not, even though the area has been voted as commercial. There's only been two businesses across the street that have been there for 50 or 60 years. Uh, and there haven't been any other businesses coming in. There's two vacant. Well, businesses. this is where he wanted to go, yeah. and he can. This is where he wanted to go. He didn't want to go to those other businesses. No, he, he wanted owns to come here. A residential house that he can rent. No, he doesn't own that. He doesn't? No, he does not He's own not that building. Owner, He's no. not the owner. The owner was here tonight. He does not own that building. 
Is he renting? He's renting it. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a renter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, evidently, they're not doing too well renting because people keep moving out. No, <laughs> nobody keeps moving. <laughs> I think you're thinking of the wrong house. Ma'am, come back in two weeks, okay? No, I know the house. I know okay. which house it is. The house that is next door to us. Well, we can't talk about that anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but come no. back in two weeks. If we get a notification. No, no, I'm here's your notification. Come back, come back in two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so we he'll be back in two weeks. Invitation. He will be back in two weeks. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Same thank time. You. Thank you. And you didn't vote, right? We did, we did not vote. Yeah, no, we vote. didn't vote on anything. I haven't voted we on We voted anything. that the application was complete. Yes. That was okay. it. Yeah. And you have said that you will recuse yourself when you're voting. Um, just for the um, just for the second application that came through, because he's a former client of mine. The medical, not the no, not the medical marijuana. Okay, why yeah. do you not rec recuse yourself for that one? Because oh. I don't have a personal um, interest in it. All right, I yeah. have a personal interest in the other. All um, right, we have to get we person. we're we're yeah. stepping outside of our procedures here. Okay. So we'll All see right. you in two weeks. You better be yeah. here. Uh, well. <laughs> I, you know, I, I do hope you recuse yourself because this. I don't have a reason to. I okay. have to have a personal reason to recuse myself All and right. not vote. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, informational items. Anybody have anything that they want to share? Um, I just want to know with the um, the site walk that we did have on the was it the sixth when we went to Norman Court? Yep. Will we be discussing that at the next meeting? He's on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Because we got into some topics yep. out there that I think are yep. relevant to being discussed. Yep. We had somebody who came in tonight that thought that we were discussing you. that. You're kicking my cord, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Your foot. <laughs> You're choking me, Frank. <laughs> I want to get your attention. I just tug on the list. Tug on the That worked. I'm watching the thing move, but I can't figure it out. Do you guys have anything? Just laying my head on the oh, desk. Oh, no, we're good. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're, we're working on a whole bunch of fun stuff this winter, so come good. hang out in the planning office and see where we're up yeah, to. Yeah, we're just, supposed to do lunch once a month. Yeah, come on in. Like, we're, it's her, really. I'm just along, you know. Yeah. All right. Riding on our coattails. When's the next I'm not listening session? The office, all right? We already painted. I'm not like moving Done. furniture. Don't we get might ask you to move, move the files around. Okay. When is the next listening session for Great Falls? Glad you asked. Uh, December fifth. Same night as our, our planning, planning board, board meeting. meeting. It's, it's, a meeting. Meeting. it's in the morning. It's oh, in the morning. Yeah. Right here oh. in the select board room. It's a morning meeting, correct? Yep. Yep. This and is, this is this is the uh, uh, this is the Burgess meeting room, not the select board. That's You're right. right. Okay. You're right. That. Absolutely. And uh, Great Falls Construction, they are um, they got 11 proposals for an engineer firm, and they'll also they'll be picking the engineer firm after the listening session. All right. So they'll you know the listening session will certainly flavor um, the conversations. Next on the agenda is the adjournment. I uh, motion to adjourn tonight's meeting, November 21st. I'll second. All in favor? All right.